Hello modellers, in my uh, modelling workshop at the present moment, a few models here and a lot more behind where you can't see. But, uh, I'm just getting ready to do a little job. Very interesting little Sato 170 three cylinder radial. And this is going to be another conversion. I'm using the Morris conversion kit. This is going to convert to uh, Spark. But on this one we're also going to fit the Morris carburetor. An interesting project, I'll show you the parts in a minute then we'll uh, take it out on the, the test bench and see how it goes. Very good for all your uh, glow engines you've got laying around, you want to change it over to petrol, this is the way to go. Okay, coming up to the uh, workshop. Okay, we're in the workshop now, and these are the bits and pieces uh, from Morris, Morris Mini Motors. Uh, look it up on your website, morrisminimotors.com. Uh, just about any engine you can convert now with uh, Morris's gear. Now, this is a carburetor that will replace the one in the uh, Sato engine. Quite a nice uh, carburetor. I've used these many times before very reliable. Once you set them it's a set and forget job. Quite uh, a pleasant carburetor actually. This is Morris's specially designed gear for the spark equipment. Two magnets here, Mark, one red, it's all set out in the instructions. And this part here this is your Hall effect sensor because you can't put a, a ring around the front of the engine this goes on there, there's two screws to replace them that's on the cam box that gives you your Hall effect sensor and this is the uh, BO3 ignition system for uh, three cylinder petrol engines uh, not a great job, um, you've seen it before with my uh, YouTube where I do the conversion um, with the timing wheel, so we won't go all through that again. I'll just assemble all this up, get it all uh, ready to go, we'll have a look at it again, and then we'll take it out on the test bench. And while I'm at it, I'll be fitting this Keelio exhaust. These are also available from uh, Morris, uh, if you want a collector ring exhaust for your radial engine. Uh, these are quite nice, I've had a few of these that I've used, and they work very, very well, very sturdy, good high quality steel and uh, quite a nice bit of gear. Put a bit of oil on the threads before you put them in. They're steel nuts. Uh, once you've got it assembled I would advise you to leave it on. Don't take it on and off because taking it off, putting it back on again can be quite a chore. Alright, I'll start assembling and I'll see you out on the test bench at a later stage. Oh, before we start, uh, I just remembered this is a, a brand new engine. It's been sitting around for a long time, hasn't been run. So uh, to take uh, a little bit of care here to make sure everything's right inside, I've used my mixture of red cool power and uh, kerosene, coconut kerosene, and uh, this syringe which goes into the nipple and I filled in there 20 mil of oil. Now when I put the engine on the bench I'll give it a real good spin to make sure everything inside is well lubricated before I start firing it up just in case. Okay, <clears throat> before we get uh, all excited and start flicking propellers. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the timing of this which is different to uh, single cylinder engines and some twins. This lead here, the Hall effect lead, is four cables where the usual one is three. The fourth cable reads this North Pole magnet which is the sensor magnet that tells the CDI through the cable the firing sequence. 
Now to set up the timing, this little piece of equipment here from Rexel does the job for you very, very nicely. You plug your cable into this, battery in as well. Turn the ring around once you've got your cylinder set on 30 degrees before top dead centre and that ring is loose. Turn it around until the red light comes on, that one there, and the little siren starts buzzing. That's setting the sequence for firing, which is very important. You then turn that ring in the direction of rotation, anti-clockwise, until we get to the first sensing magnet there, and it sets the green light and the buzzer going. Now as soon as it goes, just take it back a little bit until the green light goes out and the siren little sound box there stops blasting away. Lock the ring with your three screws. Your timing is then spot on. If you don't do it that way, it's not going to work. It's all set out in this piece of uh, information here, but that's the way you do the timing. Still 30 degrees before top dead centre in your cylinder, but you must have that sequence correct. The red light comes on, then the green light, and then everything's set. Lock it in position, and away you go. So, okay, we'll fuel up, and I'll start swinging the propeller and see what happens. All right, let's flick a propeller or two and see what happens. We're all fueled up, ignition on, feels pretty good. Listen to that all day. Hope you enjoy it. I gotta go.